Good morning, everybody. My name is Pablo Doniga. Um, I'm a business intelligence analyst in Simbert ClearPix. And today we will explore the capabilities of Snowflake Cortex solutions. And more specifically, we will look for Cortex Analyst and Cortex Search features. And during this session, we will show how we can use them uh, to create chatbots, specifically in Streamlit, and how they can help our customers to interact with their data and to get better insights from them. We will start doing a small recap of what are Cortex agents. Cortex agents are built-in AI and machine learning capabilities directly within a Snowflake environment and that can be used in a very straightforward way within a Snowflake. They can use large language models uh, securely without moving data and they enable to create uh, language queries and advanced search and data insights. And they are very easy to program and they can be used in other applications, like for example, in Streamlit. So as we said, although there are several Cortex agents, in this video, we will deeply explore two of them. In this case, uh, we will explore Cortex Analyst and Cortex Search features. Cortex Analyst uses natural language to query data automatically. So we can use our natural language to create a query. And the Cortex Analyst agent, what does is interprets and translate this query to SQL. So we will get, for example, we can ask a query and we will get a SQL query and we will also have the answer to that SQL. It works with a semantic model. So the only thing we need is to create the semantic model and then we can directly use this Cortex Analyst. Also, we will look for Cortex Search. This one also uses natural language to query the data automatically and uses semantic embeddings to understand the meaning of the query we have given. So it helps a lot to improve the search and get better insights of our data. And the search text doesn't need keywords. So what it does is understand directly the meaning and you don't need to always say the exact words that we are looking for. In continuation, we will see two Streamlit apps where we are using these two Cortex agents and how we can use them as examples for our customers. So now we will continue with the demo. For this demo, we will imagine that a use case scenario where we have a customer that it's a library. Uh, this library has a big data set of a lot of books. Uh, here is an example. It has information like the title, which is the author of the book, categories, description, and other dimensions like published year or average rating. So what our customer wants is to interact with the data. Uh, however, uh, they don't have anybody that has experience uh, with SQL or with the data analysis. And they want us to create something where they can use natural language and try to find which is the book that fits better for the customers or if they need some information, how they can interact directly with this data. So for that, what we did is this Streamlit app that it's called Books Analytica Assistant that it's based on the Cortex uh, Analyst. We will not go very deeply on the code. Uh, however, you can find the code on the blog article uh, that is linked to this video. In that blog article, you will find a link to the hands-on of Snowflake, where you will find uh, the code where this solution is based on. Also, in that blog article, you will find uh, some solutions to some limitations of that code that we find, like, for example, uh, context retention, uh, how you can solve that uh, in the code. However, we will check very quickly, we will check very quickly uh, the code. And as you can see here, this is all the code that we need for this solution. Uh, very little code, only one like 150 lines. And we will see now how powerful this solution is. Okay, we will start with a query. And in this query, we will ask which are the top five books about cooking with highest average rating. And as we can see, we have a SQL generated here that gives us the answer that we were looking for. So 
very straightforward. We give a natural language query and the Cortex analyst interprets it as a generated SQL. So I think that from an analyst point of view, it's very nice that we have the generated SQL here because we can see what is hit, uh, what it's doing here. If what we were looking for is that, in this case, it's correct because we were looking for the category cooking. It already understood that what, when we went saying cooking here, it was already the category. It, it is not even necessary to say that we want category cooking. Uh, we have the correct answer here. Okay, now we will continue with a second query. In this case, we will ask to show the top 10. As we can see, we have here the top 10 by average rating for our cooking. And it understood the context from the previous question here. So we don't even need to all the time constantly asking for the same question on changing maybe only thing, only a few things. Here, only saying, show me the top 10, it already understand from the previous question and it gets the SQL query and also the result that we wanted. And now finally, we will do a third query. This is a complex one. And what we are looking for here is for what is the most recent published book written by the author who has written more total number of pages across all books written by the author. So yeah, uh, we can see that it's quite a complex query here. It can be even difficult for some people with experience SQL. And in this case, only using natural language, we can get the SQL. And as we can see here, we have the title and which year it was published. However, what we will do also is to try to find which is the author. So, so now we will ask for the author of this book. And again, we can see that it is Stephen King and it got also the context from the previous question. So very easy, you saw how little code we need and how easy it is to interact with the data and how easy it can be for our customers and how powerful it is to, to find uh, the books and, and the queries that we desire. So we think that this could be a great solution to, to use. Now that we have already seen the Cortex Analyst Solution Streamlit app, we will go with the second Streamlit app. In this case, it's called Book Search Assistant. And what it does, it, it helps to improve and the search of the description of the book. And this one is using the Cortex Search Agent. And here we will go through again of the code. As we can see, it's very small code used and very similar to the Cortex Analyst one that we saw before. Again, we will not go deep on the code, but you will find it on the blog article linked in this video. Okay, so we will start with the first query. And in this case, we will ask to the app for a kid's book about Australia. So let's see what we can find here. OK, so what we have here is two books. In this case, one is called Serena Smith and the Sea Serpent. And it explained that it's a novel in the Uses Bytes series for early primary school age readers and about a super smart girl who scares off a sea serpent in the Bluebird Point. And another one here that's called Adam Sharp. And it's also a story about a super spy who travels to Australian Outback to investigate a mysterious TV station. So as we can see, both of, both of these titles, we, it's very difficult to see that they are for kids and also that they are for Australia. So to create a sequel, it would be maybe a bit complex. And we will have to go with some important 
uh, keywords to use in the description maybe. Uh, but using this Streamlit app, it completely understand what we are looking for, what is the meaning that we have given to our query. And here we have our solution. Uh, it also gives the citations here uh, with the title of this book. Now we will go with another query and this one we will do a more generic one. In this case, we will ask for five books where we could find dragons. Okay, uh, so we have here our five books. You can see that we have maybe some titles that, yeah, uh, we, it's pretty sure that they have dragons or they are about dragons. But for example, this one just, uh, a story about bets and an alto serve where most their secret and their dragons in order to save his people. So in this one, uh, we can see also dragons and we have five books that are found in a very easy way using natural language. And as you can see, it improves a lot the way we can find our books and how we can interact with the data. And finally, we will do a third query and we will ask, and also helps. So again, the Streamlit app understand the context of the previous answer where we were fine, where we we're looking for dragons. And in this one, it says, okay, we want books that feature dragons and elves. And it gives us an explanation of which could be and the books in this one, for example, a fantasy adventure saga set in the early days of the Middle Earth with elves, dwarves, and dragons. And here we can see the citation, and this is the name of the of the title. So this is for our customers. It could be a very, very, very nice solution, as we can see, um, very low on code, very easy to use, and um, where they can find. Uh, perfect book and where they can find the perfect answer to use with their data to get the insights that they want. And it's not needed um, some knowledge on SQL or some knowledge in on other coding. Here we can only use natural language and we will find the desired books. Okay, so finally we have some conclusions. Uh, to wrap up, uh, we can say that Cortex Analyst and Cortex Search have provided a low-code solution to bring the uh, artificial intelligence directly into our data workflows. And they seem like a very good solution to interact with the data as you don't need a lot of expertise like in SQL. And you can directly interact with the data using natural language. Also, it's a good solution to use in other apps, like for example, in Streamlit. And another good thing is that data do not need to be moved from a Snowflake. So for example, you can continue selecting the warehouse, the roles governance, it's also applied. So it's a great solution that also have all the features of Snowflake. And finally, we recommend you to check the blog article that you will find linked in the video. And you will find some improvements of the code and can be solved some solutions to the code, like for example, misspelling issues and context retention that we saw that are now solved in the demo. So that's all. Thank you very much for watching. And we hope to see you in next sessions. Goodbye.